Maybe I'm just nostalgic Or maybe it's truly magical oh, oh, oh. When I see that castle The feeling is truly magical Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just nostalgic Maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe it's truly magic Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just nostalgic I'm Andrew. And I'm Brooke. And this is a Disneydo podcast. So guys, this is a podcast where we are here to talk about all things Disney. I know myself growing up in the realm of Disney, all through my childhood. I've watched just about every Disney movie out there numerous times. I've busted cassettes, not cassettes, VHSs <laughs> of Disney movies from watching them so much. And uh, I still today listen to a lot of Disney music. And always like to check out new things. But I'm still not even as big as a fan as Brooke. I don't know if that's true. I grew up in sort of like the Disney, like, second golden era. You know, the 90s when all those really good Disney movies were starting to hit the theaters again. So I'm very nostalgic about those. They kind of um, shaped me in, in some ways and parts of my personality. So in this podcast, it comes out every Tuesday. We kind of just talk about our favorites, our experiences with Disney, what's happening at the park and in upcoming movies, and just uh, anything Disney-related. Sometimes it gets a little explicit, so keep the little ones away. Explicit because we do drink wine throughout the show. That's right, we do. Every week, our producer, Matt, joins us on the show. This podcast was his brainchild, so it's only fair he gets his turn to speak. And today he's going to be helping us with uh, a bunch of news coming out of Disney. Uh, thank you, Brooke. So we've got a couple things here that have happened throughout the like month that we've been preparing to do this podcast. So the top one that I have right now is that Disney just released an album called Disney Super Guitar. And it is a 10-track album on Spotify, iTunes, that is 80s hair metal guitarists covering Disney theme songs. It's featuring like Ozzy Osbourne's guitarist, the guitarist from Bon Jovi, and it's surprisingly very good. <laughs> I gave it a listen today at work. Um, I don't even know if I have a reaction to that. <laughs> That's just very strange. Not something I would have expected. That came from Disney? It's it's an official Disney release. The cover is literally Mickey Mouse like shredding on a guitar. Oh my gosh. I, what's the appeal for? Like, who's the well, like who is yeah, who's that for? Is that for like like my mom and dad? Does that appeal to them? <laughs> I that's been the question that's on everybody's mind. I know that I like it, so I guess it's for that very small Venn diagram overlap of metalheads <laughs> who also love Disney. I'll play you guys a real quick snippet. Yeah, of, I got to uh, hear it. I got to hear the this. opening track. All right, I'm hooked. Awesome. <laughs> I know, it's kind of great. <laughs> I take back everything I said. This now is makes sense. awesome. <laughs> it, the whole album's at no lyrics, just guitars playing the songs. That's actually really cool. <laughs> I did not expect to enjoy Tales All This Time, Beauty and the Beast song so much. Wow. <laughs> that was really cool. You couldn't see it, but Andrew and I were dancing. <laughs> they, their mouths were agape. That one was more so just because I wanted to give a shout out to that album because I think it's a really cool album. That's, that's it. That's really interesting. I never in a million years would have thought to like listen to that. <laughs> and again, let's recap. What is that album name? <laughs> uh, Disney <laughs> Super Guitar. It's what sounds, a lame name. <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds, so like there's a lot of like random Disney cover albums that come from Japan. And it sounds like a Jap like a Japanese to English translation mm -hmm. album title. That's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> uh, so the next news piece that I have up here, I'm not sure if you guys have had a chance to watch it yet or not, but the Incredibles 2 trailer was released. Yes. <gasps> so what were your thoughts on the Incredibles 2 trailer? So I'm excited for it. Here's the one thing I'm a little thrown off by. It's been how many years since it came out? I had just finished high school, so I think 2004, 2005. So yeah, so... Almost 14 years. I don't even know. Was it even... might have even been longer. It was I thought it was both. I thought it was 2002. 2004. 
It was yeah, Jason Bourne. The Incredibles. Yeah. What I had wanted is for them to pick up like however many years it's been to like see them like with time passed, and it looks like they're picking up like right out of the gate almost like right where the the molar or whatever his name is yeah is out of the ground i'm actually really excited about it okay Why? because a lot of sequels that come out they do skip ahead of time period and a lot of the time i find myself wondering what happened in between or getting frustrated with where they jumped in and maybe not answering some questions i had about the ending of the first movie so when the incredibles one ended right where that was i wasn't ready for the movie to end i did want it to keep going i wanted to see what the hell happened next especially finding out you no know, you know everybody now knows what their powers are and you want to see what they do with that especially as like a family with all the kids and stuff so i'm kind of pumped to see this kind of take off right from where it was especially because now i can definitely watch incredibles one go to the movie and it's literally like one giant movie i still would like the time leap a little bit <laughs> so Interestingly, there is a reason as to why. Tell me. According to the director, Brad Bird, he wanted to pick up right where it left it off because he wanted to capture people and how their powers connected with the way they are at a certain age and their roles in the family. Okay, that makes sense. I think it's, um, for me, I'm always optimistic with Pixar. I feel like... It took them 14 years to do The Incredibles 2, and I feel like that's probably because it took them 14 years to feel like they had something that they needed to say. And I, I'm not sure if you guys picked up on this, but I noticed very quickly in that trailer that at least 60 to 70% of that trailer is not any superhero stuff, but more... It's family dynamics. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. about family dynamics mm-hmm. and like dealing with new math. And mm-hmm. stuff like that. So that is a real thing, by the way. Oh, I know. They're teaching math differently now. <laughs> Do you know, when I was in school, I actually did math wrong and would get in trouble because then I'd write it out or when I'd do it, I wouldn't match what they did. Apparently, I was doing math, the new math way the whole time. You're ahead of your time, I Andrew. apparently was. <laughs> right um, thing, wrong time. Yeah, I think there's a lot of family dynamics going on in this movie. I'm a little irritated that there seems to be some kind of issue with Elastigirl being like the chosen one. Like, why is, why is that a problem? Why are people surprised that a woman can do the job? That's a little irritating to me, but is, that maybe that's just the time we're But right is now. the question, I think, is is everyone shocked by that, or is it just Mr. Incredible? Is I, I would be willing to bet, based on the way Pixar is, that this is actually going to be a very pro-woman movie about the husband in a relationship realizing that well, no that, that's my problem is like, why does he have an issue with it? Yeah. But I mean, I think he won't by the end of the movie. Well, yeah, yeah. obviously like, if he, if he does have a problem with it by the end of the movie, she needs to yeah. move on. Well, that's <laughs> a, the Pixar way though. In tradition is always having that kind of singular message and theme throughout a movie. They do a really great job of explaining it and make it fun and lighthearted the whole way through, but there's definitely that key message in there. Yeah. I think it'll be a good movie. I'm really excited to see it. Um, I'm not going in with any like certain expectations because I just kind of want to enjoy it. Yeah. How, how, whichever way it goes, I just want to enjoy it. So tying into the Incredibles two, which is coming out in June, Disney actually unveiled its entire 2018, 2019. Yes, they projected did. Film yeah, list. they did. Mm-hmm, they did. Uh, so, uh, you know, Avengers is already out by the time this comes out. Yep. yep. By the time this comes out, Solo, a Star Wars story will oh, be out. Yep. Jesus. So The Incredibles 2 is the next big one. Then uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, which looks promising. I know you guys. I love Paul Rudd. Yeah, I think that that's going to be fun. Very excited for Christopher Robin. Me too. I'm like, really excited for Christopher Robin. I think that's going to be fantastic. Like the the trailer, just the second that Winnie the Pooh shows up in the trailer, I felt something. I feel like Winnie the Pooh can do that to anyone, though. No matter how old you are, you feel something when you see Pooh. Like, Like, it is everyone loves him. Who's anti-Winnie the Pooh? Don't you dare. He's got a a smirk on his face. (laughs) All right, so I'm... I wouldn't say that I'm anti-Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh is cool. It's fine. I did watch it as a kid. It wasn't... It wasn't one that, as an adult, I think back and was like, "Ah, oh, Winnie the Pooh." Really, you, you know? don't remember the song like "Gotta Get Up"? 
Nope. Gotta get going. Gotta see a friend of mine. Nope. Oh, come on. Nope. I feel <laughs> like, have you watched Winnie the Pooh Tigger recently, was cool. I, mean, I remember yeah. Tigger. Yes. I liked him. He bounced around. My appreciation for Winnie the Pooh Ooh, like, Eeyore. quadrupled <laughs> after I read the book, uh, The Tao of Pooh. Have you ever heard of that book? Mm-mm. It's a book that explains Taoism using Winnie the Pooh. And its concept is that if you actually read the books and watch the show, each character represents a different personality type. So you have a character like Al who believes that he's super intelligent because he's well read, but he doesn't. Narcissism. Yeah, he doesn't get anything. Actually, maybe that's Rabbit. Yeah, Rabbit is the narcissist. Yeah. Tigger is the person who thinks that he's the best at everything. Mm-hmm. Um, Piglet Eber's, is anxiety, yeah, like pig, galore. Yeah, Piglet oh God, is like yeah. walking anxiety, but Pooh, like the concept of Dal of Pooh is like, to live a happy life, you live a life like Winnie the Pooh. You don't let things get you down. You just kind of keep moving forward, and you believe in the good in every day, even when you don't say it. He's <laughs> a cute, carly little bear named Winnie the Pooh. Of course he's going to fucking live that way. <laughs> what, what problems does he have? Yo, he's got to get that honey and, he's and deal with them bees. Honey. I'm allergic to bees, so tch, that oh. would be a lot of problems for me. Fortunately, you're not a bear that needs to feed off honey. You don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also coming up is the Nutcracker and the Four Realms, which I've seen the trailer for this, mm, and it looks interesting. Oh, with the sugar plum fairies. Yeah, it it looks. Is that coming out around Christmas? Right around Christmas. November. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It it looks interesting, but it also looks like it could be very similar to Wrinkle in Time, which was very visually appealing and storyline was garbage. Um, so I'm kind of uh, about that. Uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, the sequel, sequel to oh, Wreck-It, Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, Wreck-It Ralph. Yeah. Which, that looks very good. Wreck-It Ralph is one of my favorites. I have to be honest. Never seen it? I've never seen it. <gasps> have you seen it, Matt? I love Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph is actually, it is a movie that I did not expect to love as much as I do, and I love that movie dearly. I didn't go, like, I didn't pay attention to it, because 100% honesty here, I thought it was a DreamWorks film. <laughs> Understandable. It's, Understandable. It has like that kind of like same feel to it, I guess. Mm-hmm. At least in the trailers, I thought it was DreamWorks, and so I wasn't as like. It's, I just didn't pay much attention. I can understand that because you also think like, especially in this day and age of like Frozen and Moana, it feels a little bit, especially the way it's advertised, way more goofy. Like it feels more Shrek. Than yeah. yeah, I love Shrek. Other. No, but you Don't know what I mean. Like, but you know what I mean. Like Shrek is like very pop culture heavy, mm-hmm. and like Wreck It Ralph just felt like a giant pop culture movie. Yeah. but it's actually very touching. It's, it's incredibly touching, and it's uh, fun. It's a fun, fun and touching movie. Yeah, I the trailer for uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet looks pretty good, actually. I may watch that movie tonight. Now, <laughs> uh, I need to watch it. <laughs> then we have Mary Poppins Returns. <gasps> yes. Which I'm very excited for. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, I'm so Blunt. excited for that one. Emily Blunt's fantastic. That's I think she'll be. I mean, movie. no one is Julie Andrews, and I think Emily Blunt's like just different enough, while also kind of being similar enough. She's like the perfect mix. I can never remember how to pronounce his full name, but the guy who did the music for Moana and uh, Lin Manuel Miranda. Yes, Lin Manuel Miranda is in the movie as well. Who is he? Is he he's, Bert? He's playing a version of Bert. Nice. Uh, because it takes a couple of years into the future. Like it's oh, yeah, it's not so like... So he's playing a character named Jack, but from what I've read, it's it's similar. He is another person who Mary Poppins was once a former nanny, and he's always like held true to her mm. uh, message. Um, then we have Captain Marvel, which I know really nothing about. <laughs> I know it's uh, it's Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. Yeah, it's female-led. Yeah, that's cool. Which is awesome. Um, we've got the live-action Dumbo, which I didn't even know was being made. That, oh, Dumbo is so Tim depressing. Burton. It's Tim Burton. Tim Burton is I, directing I just, the live-action. Dumbo action. is so depressing, and then like Tim Burton, I'm like, great, now I'm really going to be like depressed. <laughs> it's going to be so dark. Uh, and you're going to have uh, Eva Green, Michael Keaton, Colin Farrell. So, Wow, that's going to be dark. Yeah, it's going to be a dark one. Coming out late, uh, no. It late early, March. I think it's early 2019, yep. right? Yeah. Late March. Um, something called Penguins. I don't know what Penguins is. I think that, isn't that like one of their like documentaries? Maybe. I guess they were unveiling everything. Yeah. <laughs> is uh, it a some? wait, did they do March of the Penguins? Was that I, Disney? I don't think they did. I don't think they did March of the Penguins, but they did something like, they did one with a chimpanzee before. When the Penguins, is that one animated? May, I, is I it just animated? Had the word I thought penguins. that was one of their like documentaries. 
Or like, you know. See if you can if find it's like it. a cute, like fun animated movie about penguins. Like I'm Happy Feet? It. Yes. yes I'm like all a happy feet. penguin. <laughs> I'm penguin not great. I even like surfs up the lesser happy feet. Then the event the next Avengers movie. Oh uh, Jesus. Live action Aladdin is coming out, which we will discuss a little bit in a in a future episode, I'm sure. But I cannot wait for yeah. live action Aladdin. <laughs> That should be fun. Hopefully, we'll be talking about another movie in just a couple minutes. Hopefully, the live-action Aladdin sticks with the original songs. (laughs) Oh, man, I have so much to say about that. (laughs) (laughs) We'll get there soon. We're almost there. Toy Story 4, which I know Brooke has some opinions on. Why? Why is it a thing? First of all, Toy Story 3 was the perfect ending to that trilogy, to to the story of the toys. Toy Story ended. There is no more story. Why are we going on? Why are we dragging this out? I, it, it To me, it seems totally unnecessary. I don't disagree, but I, I do stand by what I said with uh, The Incredibles 2, which was they, I, I will hold my opinion until the trailer comes out, and it, hopefully the trailer will give me insight on why they felt it was necessary. It feels, to me, just knowing that they're doing one, it just feels forced. It feels like a money grab because they're opening the Toy Story Land at, at Disney. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's probably because of Pixar Pier. <laughs> I agree like 100% with you, Brooke, in that Toy Story 3 was a roller coaster of emotion. Mm-hmm. But it ended so beautifully and was one of my favorite endings to a movie because, as you said, it truly closed out that chapter. It was a perfect end to a trilogy. And so for the fourth, if it is about Bonnie, it's going to be about Bonnie. I'm going to be pissed. Now, if it is about Andy, because the cool thing with Toy Story was when the first one came out, I was about the same age as Andy. My name was Andy. I had the adults. So you are you're Andy. Yeah. When the third one came out, he was getting ready to go to college. I was a senior about to graduate and like pursue the same thing. And so it was very cool in that it kind of aligned to where I was in my life. Mm-hmm. So the only way I guess I'll kind of be okay with it is if it's like Andy in his mid twenties, like in his career. What if Andy life. has a kid and he's trying to get his toys That's back what I'm saying. for his kid? If it's like something like that and he's trying to get his toy, I'll love that. That'll be fun. I think that that would be a nice tie-in. That would be cute. But if it's about Bonnie, it just, that feels forced. Yes, if it's about Bonnie, because she there was no story to her in the whole trilogy. No, she was just in. She was just in the end, and I, they wrapped it up very beautifully. They I did. think. I think it was very. Nice, um, but we just we don't need to know what happens there. Like we get it, we know it's going to happen. The <gasps> same thing that happened with like Andy. She'll enjoy them. Oh, how She'll fun would it up. be if it was Andy and he had a kid and he was like a, a man? He was gay and they had like a little adopted girl and then oh. they went to get the toys. He didn't have a father. It could be. You never know. Uh, also, I just looked it up. <laughs> Penguins is a documentary. It's <laughs> part of Disney nature. Lame. Um, <laughs> what? Penguins are great. Well. After the Toy Story 4 is going to be the live-action Lion King, which also has a fairly prominent... Is it live-action or is it just CGI? Well, I think it's the same way they did the Jungle Book. It's just CGI. (laughs) I don't know how I feel about it. Here's the thing. Jungle Book at least had a human in it. Right? I'm really excited for live-action Lion King. Um, I think the cast is great. Yeah, the voice cast. You is know, James Earl Jones reprising his role as Mufasa. Like, obvious. There was no other choice there. I'm so glad they did that. Donald um, Glover. Donald Glover. I was going to be like childish Seth Gambino. Rogen is yeah. Seth Rogen as Pumbaa is hilarious. perfect. Although I, I'm not. So I'm a huge Parks and Rec fan. Uh-huh. And so Craig is playing. Um, I forget the actual actor's name. Forgive me. Is playing Timon. <gasps> Billy Eichner. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that just yet. Because I, I really liked Nathan Lane as Timon. Yeah, but <laughs> I would say He's Billy Eichner is Lane. a good modern day Nathan Lane because he has that that voice and that tone that is going to grab your attention, that's going to be so animated. For me, it'll be how him and Seth Rogen interact. And I think if they have really good chemistry, I'm not even going to notice, you mm-hmm. know? But I really like, isn't Beyonce Nala? Beyonce's Nala. <laughs> Get it, girl. She is Nala. How do you feel about John Oliver's Zazu? Uh, I like I it. Yeah? Yeah. I, yeah. I like it. Do you it. know who the original Zazu was? Because most people forget. No. It was Mr. Bean. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> See? Rowan Atkinson. Perfect. That's amazing. <laughs> like, they could have gotten him to do it John again. John Oliver live? Yeah. Why didn't they get him again? That is a character you don't replace. Yeah. 
And well, the guy who played like, Rafiki famous, just died. Yeah, who's oh. a famous British person that we can get to voice Zazu was, I think, the thought process. Uh, Mr. Bean. Yeah. <laughs> get Rowan again. We're good. Rowan. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, isn't Beyonce playing Nala? We yeah, already said yeah, that. I said How that. many glasses of wine have you had? It's only two. two. <laughs> I don't know about that. What? All I right. think it's great. She's gonna. She's fine. She's gonna be perfect for that she's voice. Fine. She is. And let's be real, Nala isn't this huge role. So I Beyonce feel... as Nala is fine. And I bet you, I bet you they didn't even cast Beyonce. Beyonce cast herself. She called uh, him up. Oh, she's like, I saying. am Nala. I'm Nala. I'm Nala now. That's and they're exactly just like, what happened. Okay. I think that's my problem. <laughs> I'm willing to bet that Nala gets an extra song or two because Nala doesn't well, have very song heavy. Well, what if she sings Can You Feel the Love Tonight with Jason Derulo, <laughs> <laughs> which you'll hear me Jason talk about Derulo later. should have been Simba. All right, Imagine so, their duos. So I next, know. so next up on their list is Artemis Fowl, which I think is a book series. But I, I yeah, that was a good book series. Yeah, so that's I don't know anything about Artemis Fowl. Ho- hopefully, that goes not better yet. than Wrinkle in Time, which was super disappointing. Well, Oprah um, is not a Disney <laughs> store. And then Frozen Two, which again, curious on Brooke's opinion. Um, she's got a Frozen Two. So yeah, like I've told you. Um, before I am staunchly against Disney sequels, generally speaking, this one, since it's actually coming out in theaters and it's not a straight to DVD movie, I actually have really, I mean, it has a lot to live up to. Let's just be real about that. I don't think it's going to be as good as the first one. Um, this is another one where I'm coming in with just really no expectations. I'm just, cause that's how it was when I saw Frozen. I was just like, I don't know what this is about. I'm just going to watch it. And I loved it. So I'm hoping to go in with the same mindset. I don't want to get myself too hyped up. But I know as soon as that trailer drops, I'm going to be like, oh, my God, this is great. <laughs> and then I'll go see it and I'll be like, eh, it was all right. Or I'll love it. I don't know. We'll find out. But And the last thing on the list is the uh, eighth Star Wars movie. Which Ew, I no. Think I'm the only one that's that overkill. On. So <laughs> Overkill. Are we going to talk about live action Mulan? So that's what's up next. Live action Mulan missing from the list, being pushed back to at least 2020, if not further. Good. They uh, need to rethink their decisions. There's a lot of drama going on. There was some casting news, and then there was some uh, other announcements if you want to go over some of the drama brought. So, first of all, they decided to not put Captain Lee Shang in there. Mm. So Cap- so Shang's not in it, and he is the central, well, well, not the central character, but he is a main character in that movie. And so you, you get rid of Captain, Captain Shang, so you don't get I'll make a man out of you. Uh-huh. <laughs> but they're going to one-up this. They're taking out, like, almost all of the original songs. Like, no reflections, no I'll make a man out of you, no a girl worth fighting for. Nothing. What? Why even do it? Is, is that, this even Mulan? What are what are we doing here? I don't get it. It makes me really mad. I honestly, it's gonna, there's not going to be called Mulan. That's not Mulan. You that is back not two Mulan. Years, you change all that. They don't know what they're doing. No, and Kat, like Shang is like a hugely important to so many people because of his like sexual ambiguity. And then you're just going to, like, rip that from the film entirely? Dumb. What? And you're not going to have reflections in there. You're not going to have, I'll make a man out of you? Are you serious? That's, that's bananas to me. I'm glad they pushed it back two years. They need to think about what they're doing and, and fix it. What if they try to do that with Pocahontas? Shut up. Are they doing a live-action <sighs> Pocahontas? So, Have I been cast as Pocahontas? <laughs> Brooke, surprise. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so so on top of all of that, on all of the stuff that you've talked about, additionally, uh Jet Li has been cast as the Emperor. As the Emperor. And um Gong Li, another uh, an actress out of uh China, has been casted as the main villain of the movie, who will be a powerful witch. Oh, that's the other part. They have so Mulan has this incredible villain in Shan Yu, and he is just, like, scary and terrifying. And they're like, you know what? Scrap it. We're going to make the villain a woman, and she's going to be a witch because we haven't seen a million in four of those. <laughs> like, are, are you kidding me? This isn't Mulan. This isn't about some witch 
This is about the invasion of the Huns. Like, what are yeah. we doing? Well, really I really sad. need to talk to them. I want to talk to these people that are making these decisions and tell them how absolutely insane they are and what an insult it is to the kids that grew up enjoying this film. This is ridiculous. I'm offended. I don't want to see it. I don't even want to see it. McDonald's isn't going to bring back their Szechuan sauce for this. <laughs> There's no way. Go to something else. I can't think about this anymore. So, so this one, I don't know how much there is to discuss about this, but I still think it's fairly cool. Is uh, Disney is going to start streaming their TV shows on Twitter? I saw that. Why? <laughs> because <laughs> you know what? Like their current Disney shows. Yes. Think about the active users on Twitter. How many of them? There's are... only 68 million active users on Twitter. Think of how many are young. Young enough to watch like Paw Patrol. Like, is that what they're, they're streaming? Probably gaming, aiming more for, like, I mean, the show's the been teens. canceled, but, like, the Girl Meets World crowd. And, like, okay, so, like, the tweens. Yeah. I mean, if I'm a tween, I might want to go on Twitter and watch. No, no. 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 I didn't. No. I didn't no. Know. If I'm on Twitter, it's not to watch Let's something. Think about it. It's to see what Chrissy Teigen is saying. <laughs> or, like, what a celebrity is doing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not there to watch a TV show. That's why I have Netflix and Hulu and my parents' Comcast, you know, login so I can watch Jersey Shore. Like, that's what I'm doing. Exactly. Well, there's a question, too. Why didn't they go to, like, the Hulu platform or Amazon Prime? So Wonder... I thought they were creating their own streaming service. Yeah. They are as well. I think this is in addition. So why not just – no, there doesn't need to be an addition. Why don't you just do your own streaming service? They do perfectly well on their own. Between this Milan news and them going to put shows on Twitter, I think <laughs> just, Disney's falling I, apart. I know. What are they doing? <laughs> what are they doing? So additionally what they're doing is uh, with the announcement of Pixar Pier just around the corner, Pixar Pier is about to open up in Hollywood Studios – there's a bunch of news about some extra things that are going to be coming through in the Disney parks. Um, one of them, uh, which won't matter to either one of you probably, but will be very exciting for, for little Star Wars fan Matt Kelly, is in Hollywood Studios, uh, they are going to be opening a cantina inspired from the cantina. I love in the cantinas. First... Yeah, so it will be... This does interest me, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're planning to open a Star Wars cantina, and what's going to be cool about it is that while it will be a restaurant where you can sit down and eat, because they have expectations that it will be a very long wait, they will be building uh, – there will be a stage where you can watch live performances while you're waiting to be what seated. What kind of performances? Like Star Wars? inspired by Star Wars, like Ugh. different alien bands performing and stuff. I bet you alien they'll, bands. they'll probably fight with those. Lightsabers? Lightsabers. Sabers. 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 <laughs> Lightsabers. And this is why there won't be much Star Wars talk on the Disney I, n- I do not like I think there's Star enough Wars. podcasts for Star Wars. Yeah, po- Star Wars, get out of here. Now, I actually talked to Andrew about this a little bit during lunch today, but – the other big news, if we'd like to travel from what's going on to Hollywood Studios to Epcot Center, well, that travel is going to be a lot easier because they're also discussing building a thing called a Skylander. Uh, now, Brooke has never been to the Disney Park, so I have to explain this to Someone her. Someone send bit. me. <laughs> um, Hollywood Studios and Epcot Center are very close to each other. You can see the parks from, like, if you're in Epcot, you can see Hollywood Studios and vice versa. They're building basically a ski lift type system where instead of having to leave the parking lot, get on a bus, and go to the next park... You just get on take, your ski lift? Just get on the ski lift, and it'll sail you right into the different... Buildings. Why don't they have horse-drawn chariots <laughs> instead? That'd be cool. Because uh, you still have to cross a body of water to get Oh, to okay, that explains that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of the things, because of this, what they're talking about doing is that the ski le- uh, lift thing would be taking you into the country pavilions in Epcot. So in Epcot, I think it's 13, maybe 14 different countries are represented. Yeah, uh, that's, that's where, where you, you get the beer. It's where mm-hmm. you can get the different yeah. beers. That's where the frozen ride is. To make that less congested because they were worried that if they build this, there's going to be a whole congestion of people just in the countries for the ski lift. They are trying to add more rides in those countries, kind of like how they did with the frozen ride. And some of the things that they've talked about is a Ratatouille ride in (gasps) France. Ratatouille! uh, In which you will, from the pictures that I've seen, it will be like you're in a a little car and you're surrounded by like a projection screen 
where you feel like you're a mouse scurrying around inside of a kitchen and you're like hiding underneath stoves as people are walking by and stuff. Oh, interesting. Um, they're talking about a some type of Mary Poppins themed dark ride in uh, the England portion of. What do you mean dark ride? So dark rides are like um, any anything where you're inside a car in darkness moving around and then there's like animatronics inside okay. of it. So like how Peter Pan would be or Haunted Mansion. I don't or... I don't know, Matt. I've never been. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, don't talk about Haunted Mansion. I love yeah, that ride. That's my favorite ride. <laughs> He's, I love that ride. Don't talk about it. <laughs> um, and then the, the rumored one, this hasn't been – I mean all of this is rumored, but most of them are fairly confirmed – the biggest rumor is that the Mexican Pavilion will be getting a Coco ride, <gasps> uh, a boat ride through the Land of the Dead. Which oh, I that think would be will awesome! Be really, really cool. um, so hopefully that happens. Uh, and I only have one other little piece of uh, Disney news. All right, this just in. Lay it on us, man. What just we in, got? Not the most exciting thing, uh, but it is <laughs> looking like you know Disney's doing these signature series DVD releases now, where it's. Two discs filled with all types of bonus features and stuff like that. Uh, it's looking like Peter Pan will be the next signature series release. Didn't Peter Pan just come out of like the vault? Not too long Probably. ago. Probably they just did a signature series for the, uh, Lady and the Tramp, which I picked up, and it's a very it's like Aww. it's like a book packed with features thing where they really took time to like look into the whole history of it and find all of the old original drawings and stuff. So I think it's I more, love that stuff, yeah. Yeah, I think it's more of like they're trying to do these D V D series on like the the original golden age focusing on that stuff. So. I feel like more that's, like memorabilia um, than anything. Yeah. Particularly for Disney films. Like the extra features are always really good. Yeah. Documentaries about Disney are also unspeakably fascinating i was talking to you last week like i watched kind of the making of bambi yeah i mean years ago and that like still sticks with me and like the watching the making of moana is incredible like i have just as much fun watching that as i do the film so i really like all that stuff i should pick those up but that's it for the news wow that's a lot going on if they have a ton going on i mean we didn't even touch on the marvel and like star wars stories we glanced over those like you said there's plenty of podcasts that are going to yeah you can you can go to your own marvel and star wars well, let's podcast. Be honest, they're not original to disney no they're not they're acquired they're, but you know i guess acquired. technically it, that's you know disney news now they're stepchildren i mean unless doing this podcast gets me a step closer to robert downey jr and chris pratt then great <laughs> but until that happens i'm good yeah or Paul Rudd, hey. We'll be back next week, next Tuesday, to talk about our favorite Disney songs. Remember, you can email us at disneytopodcast at gmail.com or join our Facebook group, Disneytos. We'd love to chat with you guys. Thanks for listening. Hey! Listening to the Geekscape Network.